we've made it into the kitchen. I'm here with Chef Miguel from Foxy Brown. Chef, thank you for joining us at the Ally Kitchen and Bath uh, showroom. Uh, today we're going to make some crab cake and, and mac and cheese. So I don't know what I'm doing in the kitchen. I don't know what I'm doing with seafood. So I'm hoping you can help me make a crab cake. Well, I'll supervise and guide you through it. Perfect. We'll, we'll walk our steps through that. So. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me being here and representing Foxy Brown. So what we want to start is uh, we're going to make our actually crab cakes. So you want to take the bowl of the jumbo lump crab meat. We're going to put this right over here. Uh, you're going to end up needing some gloves as well. We're going to be hand mixing this. So we're going to do uh, safety first because you guys are part of the uh, safe and clean pledge. Correct. So not only do we care about the safety of our customers, but also our employees and doing the proper sanitizing and cleaning duties that we have to do now to make sure that we can stay open. And what are you guys doing to make people feel comfortable while they're in the, in the restaurant? Uh, not only do we have, um, we practice social safe distancing, masks have to be worn inside the restaurant at all times, and not when, except for when you're sitting down and eating. And we have sanitizer stations every five feet in the restaurant. Awesome, all right. So you guys are part of the Safe and Clean Pledge. We're gonna, got my gloves on. All right, now some crab. So now you want to take some of the mayo that we have here. You can dump that all in there. This is about one pound of crab cake meat, jumbo lump crab. Perfect. So in the next container we have is some breadcrumbs or Japanese panko. Perfect. And we're going to take some of the blackening seasoning that we have in there. About half that amount. About half of this. About half. All right, I'm going to screw that up. Right. But gonna, it'll be all right. I'm not making it easy on you, sorry. <laughs> All right, perfect. So now what you want to do there is go ahead and start mixing it, but don't over mix it. The goal is you want to see parts of the lump, the big pieces of the crab as well. It's not just a patty pureed to a crab cake. Now, why do you choose to hand mix this over using a uh, Just so, like I said earlier, you can kind of see like the big clumps of the jumbo lump crab there. So it's it's a quality of the crab. If you get the fine mesh crab, it's you can mix it all till it's just gone. But this one, you just want to see the proper amount of crab meat that we have in there. Gotcha. Perfect. So usually we have some crab cakes already set over there as well, because these take about an hour or two to set with the wet mix. So we have some right there if you want to bring those over. Uh, My hands are kind of dirty. Yeah, your so hands right. are kind of dirty, so we're going to have to peel that off and we'll use the trash can right there. Perfect. We got our gloves off, we cleaned up our, our mess. What's next? So next we're gonna turn on our saute pan over here to about medium high heat. Uh, we're gonna introduce a little bit of olive oil, then we're gonna pan sear each crab cakes and brown each side. So I'm How actually- How do you introduce olive oil? So do you, you typically- do you set, the, set up a nice table, candlelight dinner? <laughs> typically you wait till uh, you wanna heat up. You don't wanna put your olive oil in there while it's cold. You wanna heat it up a little bit and almost to the smoking point. You don't want to start burning your olive oil. They all have different smoking points as well, depending on what you use. This is a canola oil, so. All right. It has a different smoking point from sunflower seed oil to any kind of other. They all have different points of melting. Gotcha, so while we wait for this, tell us about Foxy Brown. What makes you guys special? Where exactly are you located? Uh, we're at 723 East Broward Boulevard, right downtown Broward and US 1. We've been open for almost 11 years now. And it's just, I, I love the place because it's, Unlike most other like local restaurants that you don't really see, it's a neighborhood place. It's very, we're very, very small, but we produce high quality food at the same time. The, the food is delicious. The, the times that I've been there have been great. I, I, I call it quaint. Is yes. that a good word yeah, for that, it? Yeah, that's a very, very good homey. word for it as well. Yeah. Right in the back of Victoria Park? Correct. Okay. So we should almost be there to the point now. If you want to go see, look at that. You want to go ahead and grab your crab cakes. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the ones that we've pre-made. Yep. We'll introduce some of that oil, get it nice all over the pan in your non-stick pan. Get a second here, and you can go ahead and lay them right down. If you want to use, use some tongs. Yep, you use some tongs. Now, how long does this process take? What are we trying to accomplish All here? we're gonna do here, because they're portioned a little bit smaller, we're just gonna brown each side. We're just gonna brown it, and then it's gonna be done. In the meantime. So you can see it right now, it's just starting to sizzle here. I don't want it at the high point because they're a little bit small. They'll burn faster without the middle being cooked. Okay, so I, this part seemed to be really quick, but so how long does it take to rest once you've made it About into About four pattern? hours. You want that wet mix to really solidify in the cooler and it'll all come together because the best thing about these crab cakes that I really like is 
there's not a lot of filler in it. There's not a lot of veggies. It's, we're highlighting the ingredients that we want to highlight. Crab cake and a binding agent and some seasonings. Simple enough. So we're gonna let this sit here for about a minute. minute about a minute, so. we'll turn it over and then brown the other side for about a minute. So in the meantime, right now, I have some Creole mustard sauce right over there. We made it in the house. This is with shallots, lemon juice, heavy cream, and five grain mustard sauce. Okay, what are so we doing with this? All we're gonna do with this, you're gonna take a spatula here and you're gonna garnish it, you can put it in the center of the plate. That's where our crab, crab cakes are gonna sit on top of. And you don't have to be shy, it needs a lot. It needs a lot, It right. needs a lot, yep. Yep, kind of spoon it on in there. You have culinary skills, yeah. Yeah, that's what we call this. <laughs> Perfect, that's awesome. So you can even take a little bit of the plate. Now you can kind of hear it crackling and popping. You can almost see that it's ready to turn over. You don't have to worry about popping on yourself. It won't be that hot. <laughs> take a sneak peek. You want to lift one up real quick just to see how brown it is. Perfect. You can brown it, turn it over just like that. Now, is there a trick to not ruining it? When well, there is kind of a trick for uh, a little bit more expert-like. I mean, you can always, well, with some practice, from an expert in a kitchen, with so. some practice, you can kind of go and just a simple, simple flick of the wrist there. If I did that, this would be across the Allied <laughs> Kitchen and Bath showroom. <laughs> so just like that, we're going to do this for about another 30 seconds to a minute. Then we're going to plate it on here, and then that's pretty much it for the crab cakes. So besides the crab cakes, what's a, what's a feature dish that people just love when they come to Fox? Uh, there's a few feature dishes we do. We do like um, we like to do um, traditional comfort food, but make a little twist on it. If you remember growing up, you ever had a beefaroni from uh, and that comes in a can? We take that and make it more adult. So that's one of my favorite dishes called the beefaroni. It's a braised short rib and a red wine uh, mirepoix, uh, five and a half hours with uh, casserole pasta. Uh, we have pecorino and lemon ricotta as well. All right. And maybe I'll take over for this one. Uh, so now that they're browned and they look nice on both sides, all we're gonna do is take the crab cakes here, put it on the side of the plate. Clean up my mess. A little, just a little bit. That comes with a little bit of practice and you're fine. <laughs> And there we have our crab cakes. This looks great. I'm sure the team behind the scenes will love to eat this. I, I unfortunately can't eat seafood, uh, oh, no. but we'll, we'll make this work for everybody behind the scenes. Chef, we made our crab cakes. Next, we're gonna uh, make a, a mac and cheese, which again, I think to me is a, a whole meal. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna grab a quick break. You're watching In the Kitchen with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival presented by Visit Lauderdale. Stick around. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival presented by Visit Lauderdale. We're here with Chef Miguel from Foxy Brown. We just made a, a delicious crab cake. Next, we're gonna make uh, my favorite dish, I think would be um, anything with pasta, but I love mac and cheese. So, Chef, uh, tell us about this mac and cheese that we're gonna we're gonna. All make. right, so we're gonna start off with our house-made bechamel sauce. Bechamel sauce, so what is that? It's uh, one of the five classic mother sauces. And bechamel, which it's a, essentially a cheese sauce. So what you want to do is start off with making a simple roux. It's equal parts butter and flour. You want to go on low heat, make sure you cook out some of that flour, then you introduce your milk, heavy cream, half and half. That's what we use for our bechamel sauce. We also have a few, a uh, decent amount of spices in there. Ours has a little bit of kick to it, so it might not be too kid friendly. So it's got <laughs> cayenne, chili flakes, touch of nutmeg, onion, garlic, and salt and pepper. All right, this sounds great. So we'll go on, you want kind of a, like a low heat for this cheese sauce. If you have it on too much of a high heat, it's gonna end up burning it and give that burned taste to it. We're just gonna heat this up on low heat. You can see it already starting to warm up. We're gonna take our cavatappi pasta. Cavatappi pasta. 
good. That sounds really fancy. It does sound really fancy. <laughs> That just looks like a spiral pasta. To that's me. essentially <laughs> what it is. Just a little bit longer than the spiral, though. All right, that, that's what makes it a cavatabi pasta. So again, we're just going to keep moving this around because with this cheese sauce and everything else, the noodles are already cooked. You don't want anything to burn. You want constant care and attention to everything that you make. So you can see it's already starting to smoke, get a little bubbly on the corners here. And then we're going to give this about another 30 seconds or so. And we're going to have some cheese on top. I feel like I need a stopwatch. <laughs> a stopwatch, race watch. And then uh, we're going to melt some cheese and some breadcrumbs on top to give it that nice crunch to it as well. All right. Now, if you want to try to practice your flipping, you can, just like the crab cakes. I don't know. Are I think they will throw me out of the showroom because right, right. I will make a mess that I can't clean up. I'll keep an eye on it then. But I appreciate the, the invite to, to mess up someone else's kitchen. You only get better by practicing. So. <laughs> I'll do it at home, all right? <laughs> so on the corners, you can kind of see here it's starting to bubble up. So that we're reaching the right point right now. Where we want to just transfer this to right to our mac and cheese bowl. We're going to throw this in the oven when we're done to kind of give it Yep, the, we're going to brown off. some more cheese and breadcrumbs on top to really finish it off. Listen, you're speaking to the 12-year-old in there. <laughs> So this is right up your alley. And so we have a mixed cheddar cheese, white and yellow. We're gonna top that off. The more cheese, the better. Amen. Okay, then we're just gonna transfer this right to the oven and we're gonna melt everything until it's golden brown. All right, so Chef, we're gonna take this and put it in the oven. Yep. We're gonna, gonna let the cheese melt. Let the cheese melt. We're gonna give it about a minute. Now, how, how hot is this oven? I have it set on like a, a medium broil right now. Right. Just to really melt the top of that cheese and really get it nice and So we're not around. baking it, we're just broiling off the top? Correct. All right. Since the insides were already cooked all the way through and everything, we're just browning the top of it right now. I cannot wait to get into this. I couldn't have the crab cakes, but I can certainly have mac You can cheese. definitely, you don't have to share this one. Right? This <laughs> I don't pretty. think I will. We'll just go ahead and add some breadcrumbs. Just a little bit on top. And this is going to take about 15 seconds in order to get nice and brown. I'm telling you, I need a stopwatch for this. <laughs> so now that the breadcrumbs are nice and toasted, we're just going to take this out of the oven and it's ready to serve. Jeff, this looks incredible. There we go. Nobody else, it's, the smell is, you, you can't beat the aroma. It brings you back. Out of that. <laughs> Chef, the beefaroni that you spoke about earlier, that's part of your Dine Out Lauderdale menu, and I know you guys are participating in Dine Out Lauderdale. What, Correct. Can you kind of explain a little bit more about what's on the menu and, and how this works and how you guys are celebrating the Dine Out Lauderdale? Yeah, it, it's a great opportunity for people that it gives you a better chance to get a lot of restaurants that you've never been to before, and whether it's a far range from, you can get a, from five-star restaurants down to three to, they, it's a very wide range. So what we have is, for $35, you get uh, two of our appetizers, one entree, and one dessert. Like we said, the beefaroni that we spoke about earlier, we have a couple salads on there and a chocolate Oreo parfait for dessert. All of that is incredible for 35 bucks. Yeah, it gives you a little you taste of that. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, you can't beat that. You guys are right in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. At, Correct, right downtown. Broward and Federal, or just a little bit uh, east, of, east of Federal Highway. Um, you have the sign with the nice little lights down the side. Yeah, you can't miss us. <laughs> awesome. Chef, thank you for making all this incredible food. We made a mac and cheese, we made uh, crab cakes, or I attempted to make crab cakes. You just made it, <laughs> you made it earlier. <laughs> I appreciate it. You guys are, are part of the Dine Out Lauderdale menu. Uh, for 35 bucks, I don't know how you can beat that. Um, mm -hmm. I can't wait to, to get, on the, get on the horn there and, and drive over and enjoy that. Uh, make sure you visit the team at Foxy Brown, uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale. You've been watching In the Kitchen with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival presented by Visit Lauderdale. Thanks for sticking around.